Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, March meeting of the Boulder Police Oversight Panel. Uh, we acknowledge the Arapaho, Ute, and Cheyenne tribes, the traditional custodians of the land on which the Police Oversight Panel and the Boulder Police Department operate and pay our respects to their elders, past and present. And I would also like to welcome um, the public and any press that's also attending as well. And welcome to the panel members. I also want to thank everyone for being here and acknowledge uh, you know, anything this week that may have been challenging and just thank you for your, your time. Members of the public, we use a Q&A feature during the meeting. We will answer small questions in the Q&A, but if you have a bigger question, um, please save that for the public, the public comment section. You can also submit complaints uh, directly to the panel or contact the panel outside of the meeting. Our web address is bouldercolorado.gov forward slash services forward slash police dash oversight. And our panel email is police oversight panel at bouldercolorado.gov. And reminding the public and the panel that our meetings uh, will be posted to the website. If we could share the agenda, please. All right, thank you. So our first item on our agenda is the approval of the February meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, thank you. Was there anything else on the minutes? Looks like we have a hand up, Victor. Yes, go ahead. Um, yeah, I have a question about um, changes to the minutes, the potential of changes to the minutes. There are several things that I don't think are quite accurate. And I'm not sure what the procedure to that for that is. So we would, what is the procedure for that? Would it have to be, is that something you could, we can edit now if you just submit those changes or is there multiple things that would take a longer conversation? I think it would take a longer conversation, honestly. There's one that's quick that we can add right now is in section 5C. Uh, where it says Miss Friend asked if they would, uh, no, wait, sorry, five. Five C, Miss Friend shared that it would be nice to limit the answers to, of the chief to um, to five minutes. I believe I said that, if Lizzie, yeah. Um, But the main part is the summary of the under committee updates to a community engagement. Um, I think it's missing a lot of the conversation that we had. And I would like that to be in the minutes, if at all possible. I know we received these minutes on Friday, so yeah, I apologize. I was not. Um, life has been happening um, and I was not um, able to read them before today, this afternoon. I come in prepared, but I was not able to do it um, on Friday. So Sherry, I'm not sure what to do here. 
do we just postpone this till the next meeting or Aaron? Oh. Yes. Am I unmuted now? Yes. All right. Well, I I'm, thank you uh, for calling on me. What I've seen other boards do is to have whatever the suggested change is submitted to staff who can then um, redisperse it in your next month's minutes uh, for the rest of the panel members to review and then vote on it at the next month. That sounds great. So Milan, if you could just get those over to Selena and then we can process that before the next meeting. Yeah, thank you. And if anybody else has changes that they see they would like, please contact me. I'm happy to uh, consolidate everything. Thank and then you. Aaron, oh, sorry, Melinda. And then Aaron, so next month, then we would vote on the, they would vote on the February and the March minutes sequentially. That's correct. Yes. Oh. And thank you, Aaron, for that. All right, thank you. Uh, just moving on to the next item, um, which is a clarification. So before any additional time passes, I would like the opportunity to address the confusion from last month's meeting. No illegal conduct or any type of violation occurred by Soledad Dila Diaz or Milan Vilard in upholding their duties as community engagement and communication committee co-chairs. I acknowledge the pain I caused and that they are both that they both experienced during the meeting and afterwards. I apologize sincerely for implying that their actions were a violation, and I seek to make amends. I also wish to apologize to the Boulder chapter of the NAACP for any impact that this may have had on them. The Boulder chapter of the NAACP is a valued organization which has been instrumental in creating this panel. There's also been conversations and review of state laws, our ordinance, bylaws, and consultation with the city's attorney's office, and internal conversations have taken place. They all reaffirm that no violation of, or misconduct of any kind were found. I deeply hope that together we can move forward respectfully and productively with the understanding that through our different lenses and experiences, we are all here working towards the common goal of keeping police accountable for all the communities we serve. And um, our next item is we have new members. So there's a time for introductions. Um, this is much needed, long overdue, raising our ranks. So um, each of you will have a couple minutes just to share what you would like, you know, your experiences or whatever you feel is appropriate. So Bill, Luna, or Abigail, the floor is open to you. I can break the ice and go first. Um, hi, y'all. I've met a few of y'all during training. My name is Abigail Frankie. I'm a second year law student at CU Boulder. I'm getting my JD with the certificate in civil rights and racial justice. I'm working for the Denver Public Defenders this summer, and I'm currently working for the Denver Appellate Public Defenders. Uh, so this is work that means a lot to me that I'm in the space of quite frequently, and I'm really excited to be working with all of you on something that I feel is just so important to the world. Yeah. I'll go ahead and go next. Um, hi everybody, Bill De La Cruz. I've been in Boulder County for about 40 years, lived in Boulder for about 36 years and raised my kids there and served on the school board for about six years and have been in and out of this conversation about policing and the justice system in Boulder and Boulder County for much of that time. And I was just excited to be picked to be able to work with you all to really dive deep into the elements of policing and how they impact all of the communities that they represent. So I'm just really excited to um, be here with you all.
Hey everyone, my name is Luna. Um, <clears throat> I prefer they them pronouns and I am a junior in my undergrad at Nairobi University. I study uh, religion and environmental justice. Um, I also work for the university as a work study under their Office for Mission, Culture and Inclusive Community. Um, we do lots of events and I also uh, am an officer for our restorative community uh, chapter helping students support their conflict. Um, and yeah, this work is really meaningful to me. I'm always interested in like, yeah, this is a huge national conversation um, around policing and yeah, just excited to get my hands dirty. And uh, yeah, I guess I've also worked with Zade Atkinson directly doing some events in town and um, I know that he's connected in this too. So yeah, thanks for having me here and I'm excited to work with you all. Um, I'm really excited to um, have you all here. And I would also, um, I hope you get to know the the group better. Um, we had some great candidates this year and I'm really excited to have you on the panel. Um, Nuria is not able to make it tonight, but she does hope to come to the next meeting where she can um, you know, have an introduction with some of you. Um, but I do want to read into the, the record um, a really boring message from her. Um, in welcoming our newest members to serve the police oversight panel, I appreciate that they have already met the training modules required by ordinance 8609, 2-11-14, a1 and 3. I understand the final training required under 2-11-14A2 will occur in April of 2024. In accordance with 2-11-14C, I formally excuse Bill de la Cruz, Abigail Frankie, and Luna Rosal from receiving this training until the Boulder Police Department provides the April 2024 training. Each of our new panel members will be able to vote on panel business during this time period. Note, this does not extend to the ability to vote during a case review until completion of the 2-11-14 A2 training requirements. Thank you. She will have much better words to say when she is, uh, when she gets to see you hopefully in person. It was also great to, to meet you folks at our training on March 2nd as well. So are there any other words that panel members want to say to our new members that hasn't been said? Welcome. <laughs> Agreed. We're glad you guys are here. Welcome. Yeah, it's really nice to have you here. Now, Victor, before we move be, uh, too much farther, I'd like to go back to what you just addressed with your statement um, and, and just clarify uh, a question that came up, I think, during the last meeting or the meeting before. So whenever it's okay for me to do that. Uh, now would be a good time. Okay. All right. Um, the question came uh, up as to, uh, in terms of the selection, our selection on the panels, as to whether or not we represent certain organizations. And in my case, and uh, Milan, um, we are both members of the NAACP. And, uh, but in terms of the selection committee for the panel, we were selected we do not represent or the organizations. We do not. We were selected uh, just based on our individual um, experiences, qualifications, and and uh, uh, as it fell in line with that process. Uh, I said I, I would uh, ask to get clarification and bring that back to this group, and I'm just following through on that. So. That clarified hope. 
Yes, it does. Thank you. Um, and we also discussed this during the the, the training as well. Um, Good. You know that we are individual community members who represent. Um, we do have connections, but we're here to represent ourselves. Exactly. Very well. Thank you. And the next item on our agenda is the co-chair elections. And um, yes, co-chair elections. Um, so Lena will be um, uh, doing a poll through Zoom. So we're going to hope that technology is our friend so that people can use that to vote. Um, before that, I would um, just like to read some of the, the bylaws that include information about the uh, co-chairs. Um, so it's uh, 2.1 officers. The panel will elect two co-chairs from among the panelists. Co-chairs may be re-elected to serve a total of two one-year terms, and co-chairs will be responsible for A, co-development of agenda and leading each panel meeting, B, communicating the needs of the panel to the monitor and attending a closed monthly meeting between co-chairs and monitor, C, engaging with the community and assisting with outreach efforts, D, ensuring the oversight panel's annual report is completed and published in a timely manner, and E, helping to maintain panelists' participation and morale, as well as mediating conflict as needed between um, panelists. Um, and um, the election of the co-chairs will take place um, annually, and it will be by secret ballots from each panelist. And uh, the, we will the monitor will announce the two candidates who will serve together as co-chairs. Has I, I mean one of the questions that I have is whether people had the opportunity in advance to um, review the candidate selections or the the candidate statements. I see a lot of shaking of heads or nodding of heads, I should say. Um. If we are, if, I don't know if anyone wants to have, uh, to hear the candidates give uh, a moment or two to say something, or if they want to proceed with the vote. I think there was a request that we all say a little something, if I remember correctly. Okay. I don't know if everyone knows, well, Maybe they don't know who the candidates are if they didn't read the email. Um, I saw a lot of heads shaking, but how about you? How about we have each of the candidates um, just give a like 30 second to a minute pitch? All right, I'll jump in. Thanks, Hi, everybody. Bill. I um, put in to be a co-chair because I really want to be a part of this group. I think it's a really great opportunity and I'm really um, excited not only about the work that we can do in collaboration with the police department, I'm really excited also about the community engagement piece because I talked to a lot of people over the course of years and I know that this is a conversation that people are looking forward to and want to engage in. And so I just want to be supportive of that. And, and I've, as a mediator, I resolve a lot of conflict and work through that. So I have a lot of skills in that piece. And, um, and I'm just really excited about this group. So I'm going to stop there. Um, thank you, Bill. Um... Soledad, would you like to go next? Sure. 
Yeah, so I am putting my name there. I think uh, the year, the past year have been a very interesting one. We have learned a lot on um, kind of the challenges of the panel. We we were able to work through uh, what I, I think it was a challenging year. Um, I was involved in, in the uh, development of the new ordinance. Um, and and I think I, I felt I felt it naturally to put my name there and and offer to to serve this panel and serve the community as a co-chair. Um, I want to be able to build bridges and to build trust and re-engage with community members and uh, community partners that are traditionally impacted by the work that we're doing. So um, yeah, just willing to serve. So that that's me. Thank you, Soledad and Victor. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm a founding member of this panel. I've been here from the beginning and through all this sacrifice, I've I have seen a lot and there's a lot of things I have learned. There's some things that I can share um, just from the brief historical perspective of being on the panel and seeing some of the hard stuff we had to do. Um, my goal for this panel is that it's gonna be strong for the next five, 10, 15, 20 years. As my son grows up in this town, there will be something in place that wasn't there before. Um, and that's that's very important to me, the legacy of this panel and making sure that we create a strong foundation for future panels. I, I've seen a lot of that work done and this is my last chance to do something as next year I'm out of here and it's all gonna be on your shoulders and good luck with that. But while I'm here, I still have some things to, to share. And so I'm willing to sacrifice even more time for one more year because I, I believe in this. Um, but it hasn't been service, it's been sacrifice. It's been very hard. It has been draining. Um, if there are new co-chairs that step up, I'll be, I'll be happy for that too. But again, my heart is with the panel and the work and making sure that this is something that will stand the test of time. Okay. Thank you all. Selena? Do you want me to, um, okay, just give me one sec. Okay, I think you should be seeing now a poll on your screen. Um, so please vote for two co-chairs, it's a multiple choice. Um, so you'll be able to just vote for two. And this is only, the, the vote is only for, um, you know, panel members. It actually says that host and panelists cannot vote. What? Yeah, it's not letting me do anything when I click on it. That's really bad, actually. Okay, hold on. I did this earlier and it worked, so... <laughs> See. Sherry, we might have to do this another way. I don't have a backup. Um, hmm. Well, let me ask people who were on the panel last year, how do you do virtual polls anonymously? Just sending you a direct message of their two choices. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Well, if yeah if people want to uh to text me then or you can just do it in the you can do it in or the do chat. it in the chat oh that's so much easier yeah. okay yeah you can just there we thought we were going to be fancy you can select sherry dawn and just send her a direct message yep yeah. yes so are we sending it to sherry or 
Selena. Who are we sending it to? Oh. Um, I'm I getting them right now. So okay. how about we okay. just... All right. I think I have eight people's responses. Do you, you don't have mine, do you, Sherry? I, that you're, you're a person who I was thinking I did not see okay. your response from. Yeah, I was trying, I'm trying to um, select and it's not letting me, it's not oh. great. Um, the, with the, with the poll that, uh, Selena put in. Yeah. That apparently is not working for some reason. So we were just having people, um, uh, send me directly through the chat and, oh, okay. and just the names that you're looking for. Okay. Oh, no problem. But. We maintain the option of uh, selecting all three, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> okay. That's wishful thinking. All right, you should have it. Um, okay. okay, and I... I'm not trying to drum up uh, suspense. Um, I'm trying to figure out, I'm still, it looks like I'm still missing Oh, maybe not. Um. 
Apologies, everyone. Um, Well, um, if you don't mind, because I'm sure you don't enjoy watching me look at my screen or look at this, um, it's it's quite clear, even though the numbers aren't totally working out right now. But it is the 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 two vic the two people who are who um, have the most votes is pretty clear. Are people okay with me? Um, sharing that right now, moving on to the next agenda item, and then I can get you the final tabulations after I have don't feel on the spot. Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. I see lots of people nodding. Um, our new co-chairs are uh, Soledad and Victor. So thank you. Um, and I think it would be remiss to not uh, thank Bill for coming out out of the gate strong and showing, you know, this strong interest. He attended a community engagement and the co-chair meeting last week. So the the dedication is obviously there and we look forward to um, working with you, Bill. I will be but, here to support our co-chairs and the rest of the panel. Thank you. Well, thanks everyone. Um, super excited to be working with Soledad. Um, and we'll jump back into this with the committee updates. Uh, the first one is coming from the community engagement. And of course, with all the tabs, I lost my minutes. But I found them. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you for the vote of confidence. By the way, panelists, I'm super honored. So we'll go with the update. So one of the first things that we discussed at our community engagement and communication committee meeting last week was exactly about that, the name of the committee. So uh, it has been you sometimes like um, a community outreach committee, communication committee, and the committee would like to propose that we confirm uh, that we establish the name of community engagement and communications committee uh, for more formal establishment of the name. So if, if we want to kind of maybe, I don't know, confirm that, vote on that. I don't know how we do it. Oh, well. I think we talked about voting, asking mm -hmm. panel members to vote on it. So yep. um, if we that's did. okay with everybody. We do. So, Okay, so I th I think the proper thing will be that someone um, moves a motion to accept the proposed name. So moved. Seconded. Second. Yeah. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Someone opposing? No. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Um. The other conversation that we engaged in uh, was kind of asking ourselves a couple of questions. One is uh, in terms of the engagement and what will warrant um, any particular authorization if, and I think we, we are clear now that if two members of the panel are meeting um, with community members that doesn't constitute an open meeting. So I think that we are agree uh, in agreement that 
we can keep doing um, what we were supposed supposed to be doing, which is engaging with community members, no more than two panelists. Um, and then uh, we need just to define who will be attending those meetings. Um, we're gonna try to communicate as much as possible in advance, who are we meeting with? So that way, if anyone is interested or have some feedback or anything, we, they can reach out. But I guess the main goal is to be able to move forward with the meetings and have them happen uh, and facilitate the work of the engagement committee rather than kind of, you know, is, is scheduling is a nightmare. So just, just to make that clear, I think that the other conversation was around trust and basically trust within the panel, building trust with the communities and also uh, trust between the, pan the panel, the whole panel and the community engagement committee. So I think that is something that we can talk more and address at our retreat. Um, just, I guess, to lay some foundations to um, start building that trust that we, we so badly need. And Milan, please jump in if I'm missing something. Um, my notes are confusing. Yeah, go ahead. You're muted. Milan, you're muted. Sorry about that. Raise my hand and instead of unmute. Um, I think um, I just want to clarify something about um, the two members of the panel meeting with community members or organizations and, and maybe call it instead of a meeting, calling it like a listening um, meeting where we we're not talking about panel business ourselves or we're not we're not there to represent real uh, we're representing the panel but we're there to listen and report back and then make decisions in this panel like with this panel and with the engagement committee um i think it's different we're also going to have information informational events or other events where we're going to go out in numbers where it's going to be announced where we're going to be more um out there and 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 sharing documentation and uh, answering questions and those will be open to the public and to all of us to participate um, and so I just want to make sure that there's no confusion about the meetings that we're having when it's two only two members going there they're really meant to uh, create a space for us to listen. Uh, deeply to what community members need to share with us um, without, um, we know that some of the community members that we want to hear from um, may feel threatened, um, may feel uncomfortable, um, and may have um, interactions with police that they don't want to share publicly uh, for obvious reasons. And so we want to give a platform for that, but we also want to report on our findings um, to all of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I should have said that the Community Engagement Committee, uh, we met in a uh, present where Milan, Bill, Madeline, Sherry, Selena, and myself. Um, so the, the meetings are open for, of course, for everyone to attend and conversation happens there. I mean, it's a little bit different than these meetings. They are open to the public. People can uh, watch and the meeting, but there, we don't have um, fully common at the end. It's just like a work group. Um, and I will say uh, just for the sake of time, the most important piece that was discussed is really about trust uh, within the panel, what trust means for you know each of us, how do we build trust among ourselves, among the community? Uh, and I think that there's there's a clear, clear understanding that we need to work on that and that part of that um, work that we have in front of us is really kind of engaging in a way that fosters an environment where we can trust each other, get to know each other and work collaboratively. Um, and that uh, project is going to be happening soon, as soon as we are able to schedule our retreat, uh, which is like a non-working, you know, kind of all panel meeting. So, 
I think that kind of encompasses everything. So uh, Bill, Marilyn, Milan, if you want to add anything that I missed. I'm I'm good. I think you you summarized it well. Yeah, I think those were the main points that I heard um, in the conversation. Yeah, I agree. Okay, thank you everyone. Moving on to the governance committee updates. Governance committee, we are um, in the process. Well, from the last meeting that we had, we are a committee of basically one. <laughs> and so, we are hoping to recruit from our new members, um, additional members to join the um, one plus. I mean, Lynn said she would uh, participate um, when possible, but she's already um, vice chair um, and, and very active. So uh, we pretty much decided that we would defer um uh, well we our, our efforts to recruit additional members would come from the pool of of new panelists and so um that's what we're hoping to do and hopefully we can um get volunteers for that tonight by the close of this meeting because we do have uh some open items that we need to really address and uh get working on particularly uh, with the ordinance, with the, or the revisions to the new ordinance and, and the bylaws. So don't all jump in at once. <laughs> the, the committee assignments are the next item we have after the Okay, yeah. all right. Everyone's restraining themselves. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, Luna? Is there somewhere I can read uh, like a scope of that committee or like? Yes, it's in the bylaws and that's part of the work that uh, needs to be continued because some of those sections are incomplete, but the oh. bylaws would be the best place. There is a definition in there. Thank you. And that can be found on the panel's website. It's all on that, in that first page there. And our next update is the legacy committee. Uh, the legacy committee, we met on the 22nd. Um, we were just trying to look at what was submitted earlier on regarding data on juvenile in interactions and the uh, BPD. And what we resolved was that we needed to get more granular data or more information or uh, subsequent to that, I think Sherry has requested for more information or, or clarified our ask in greater detail, and I'll later speak to it, uh, uh, to, the, to the request after this. So that's, um, our hope is that at the next meeting on the 21st, we'll have gotten that data, then we'll, we'll, we'll start digging in to uh, investigate more. So, Sherry, do you want to add more color to that? Um, I received a response from uh, uh, Daniel Reinhardt, and he estimated that it would be uh, approximately 10 hours of work to obtain the, the data that we were we were requesting. And he is also um, out at out this week from work. So I hope to touch base with him early next week. When he returns to the office to see if um if there's ways to maybe reduce that that ask that would be still give us the the information that we need thank you yeah i was hoping to add just one point <clears throat> as well um we started a document that we wanted to share with the rest of the panel 
um, to start keeping track of ideas for topics that we want to dig into. Um, we definitely want to make sure that those ideas aren't just coming from the legacy committee and are coming from the full panel. And so we want to sort of start a process of maintaining a list, talking through it, talking through finer details in the legacy committee, but then always coming back to the panel to actually choose topics, prioritize things, and sort of vet things with you all to finalize. Um, so I can email out a link after the meeting, but that document is in the legacy committee folder on the SharePoint and it's called legacy committee research topics. So please go in there anytime, add things, review what we have. Right now we just have the idea we're working on now and kind of the initial, um, the start of a second idea, but we would love more input on that. So please do get in there, add some stuff. Th thanks, Liz. Victor, I think that's, uh, unless there's any other members of our committee uh, wishing to chime in, I think that that's essentially what we've been up to. Thank you. Um, so we do have time stamps on our agenda, so we are trying to adhere to the time. Um, and so our next thing is committee assignments. And I believe we have openings on at least two committees, right? If Soledad is now the co-chair, we have an opening on community engagement. I know AB had talked about that before. They're not here. Uh, we also have an opening on the governance committee as a committee co-chair. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Does that mean that Soledad cannot be co-chair of the Community Engagement Committee? Yeah, it's up to her. That's a lot of sacrifice. So she's now taken on three additional meetings on top of that. So yeah, I would like to hear um, what she thinks. Me, me, me too. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I don't know if I'm thinking, but okay, thank you. No, um, Milan, I'm happy to stay with you until we, if anyone else have interest, of course, I will step aside and have a new member join you. But in the meantime, until we find someone, I can keep working with you. And Milan, I know AB said she wanted to join this committee as well. So I don't know if she knows the dates or times, but is there anyone who wants to join the governance committee? I was about to say, Sherry and I talked about it. I'm a law student. I'm a bylaws girl. I'm here for governance. Awesome. Yay. Go, <laughs> governance, go. Yay. Thank you for stepping up, Abigail. Thank, Thank you, Abigail. Abigail. Yeah. And I would be interested in the community engagement piece. Committee. Thank you, Bill. Mm -hmm. I saw there's another committee in the bylaws that's education and orientation. Is that not a committee we're using? No, that is why the governance committee is almost a high priority because our bylaws yeah. are incomplete and mm -hmm. there's Outdated. work in there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, our next item on the agenda is talking about panel expectations. There are a, a couple of topics under here. Um, did you want to start this one, Sherry? Oh, I thought this was yours. Um, well, I'll I can speak to it too. Laura's yours. Um, sometimes I'm not the best at pep talks, but look, we need to show up to meetings on that are planned. A lot of time and effort, Selena 
So Lena and, and Sherry put a lot of time and effort into our meetings. And when we order snacks and no one shows up or we have guest speakers, you know, come to our meetings and no one shows up, it just has impacts. I know life happens, but we agree to hold certain expectations as members of the panel. Um, so that's reading case reviews, show, showing up on time, giving prior notice if you're unable to attend a meeting. Um, that's also about you know respectful dialogue between panel members and treating each other with respect, not interrupting people, letting someone finish their sentence and then letting someone else talk. Um, are also some of those, you know, expectations as well. Anything you would add to that, Sherry? Um, Victor. Oh, so, sorry, Sherry. Go ahead. Oh, no. You, you I, I was, was going to say, Victor, uh, looking at our, our bylaws, there are implications on attendance. So in terms of if you don't attend certain meetings, uh, it has an impact on whether somebody retains membership of the panel or not. Yes, there's actually a thing in the bylaws that says it's an automatic resignation and then you're put up for vote for removal. So we haven't had to do that before, but please check the attendance, see the meetings that you missed and make sure that if that applies to you, that you reach out to the co-chairs and you know, we can have a conversation about that. I think that is also included in the new ordinance. Um, so I think, I mean, the attendance and the way of excusing attendance, if you cannot make it, is in the ordinance. Um, so maybe we, we need to take a look at that because I don't think at, right now that is aligning with the bylaws. So just to make sure. I mean, I think the idea is we, you know, hopefully will the that panel members will, you know, be motivated and attend. Like, I don't think anyone wants to be in a position where we're, you know, removing someone from the panel, um, and only as the the last option. Um, do you, Soledad, have anything else you'd like to say about uh, expectations for for the panel now as code chair? Uh, not right now, I think. I need to process this whole thing. No. Uh, but I do think one of the things maybe worth mentioning is that in the new ordinance, we uh, define, define that uh, this meeting is super important, but actually uh, case reviews, which is what we kind of the core of our work, are also important. So we really hope that when you sign up for reviewing cases, we have a quorum to be able to review a case. If we don't do, if we don't get three people reviewing a case, we cannot review and there has to be rescheduled. And we are super understanding in general that that, you know, life happens and we were open. Sherry is super flexible and I had to reschedule once. So yeah, it's open to that. But that is, I think, one of the most important um things that we need to attend and we need to commit to put the work in, the work prior to, so you show up prepared, um, I think even more so for this meeting. So um, yeah, and everyone really prepares for those meetings. I, as I mentioned at the training, sometimes you have to put a lot of hours. So as soon as you're assigned, take a look at your folder, plan your time. So when you, when we meet, to review a case, we're all well prepared and we know what we're talking about. So we don't have to spend five hours and we can get it done uh, in, a, in a more effective way. I would also say that includes responding to the polls. Um, there's been a couple of polls where I went to vote and only three people had voted. So again, <laughs> time and effort goes into making those polls. So please, um, that's just a way to, for us to be more effective with the limited time that we have. And I, I will add that add to that. I mean, thank you, Victor. Um, you know, Selena sends out the polls and one of the things that we feel has been happening is um, it 
it ends up either putting us at a scramble and some of your other colleagues who are waiting to find out dates so that they can put them on their calendar. Um, and if we don't get an answer until, you know, two weeks later or something, then we're often like feeling like we're a step behind with the actual event that we're trying to, that we're trying to schedule. So um, don't make Selena's life more stressful. She's great. She is great. She's great. And, and let me just say now that if um, there is ever a question uh, and you haven't gotten an answer, just text me, please. I've had issues with my um, email, the government, the Boulder County email. And so um, Selena uh, usually just sends it to my personal email. But um, if there's ever a holdup and it's on my end, please just text me and I'll give you an answer immediately. Jason and Milan. Um, I, I will say that there were times when the poll had an option of two dates and I could do either. And so I, I did not vote in part because I didn't want to vote for one, which caused somebody else trouble. Um, so that was my thought process. I'm more than happy to vote, but I, I'm, when I can do either date, there's no point. In, I, I feel like I don't want to like put somebody else out by voting to, for a date um, in that situation. Uh, maybe on the poll, it has no preference and that's fine. I'll do a better job. Um, Thank you, Jason Milan. Um, yeah, I think Jason, normally you can select, tick the, the dates that you can do and you should be able to do both most of the time like we have that it's not a radio button but a checkbox and that means that you have multiple choice i think i mean at least that's my my experience i'm just wondering selena are, are there any polls out right now <laughs> that i might have missed uh not currently i don't okay. have any out at the moment but I should be sending one out after this meeting um, regarding the retreat. But other than that, I don't think I have anything that's standing at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. So now is the time for our five minute break and we'll come back at 7.37. Thank you. All right, welcome back. Let me just get the agenda. Yes, Sherry. Um, if people are, I, I'd almost forgot to, to present this. Um, the, the tabulations were for the, the co-chairs poll and Victor received nine votes. Soledad received seven, and Bill received three. And if the math isn't mathing, it's because one person only voted for one person. I thank you that. So if the next item is There is a city council meeting that's happening, uh, city council retreat, and they've asked all board and panel, all city boards to submit a list of their top three priorities and their top three items on their work plan. I did send out an email. Um, Bill and Lizzie did respond to that. So now we just wanted to make a space just to talk about what do you think our top three priorities are as city council was asking for this information, we could just give them a bullet point list of one, two, three, or we can give them like a huge detailed summary. They're okay with either version of that. Um,
and we need to submit this feedback before March 22nd. There's also room for this report to have dissenting or minority opinions as well. So we're not just going to present one item, but if someone feels some way about something else, all that's going to be presented as well. So as I guess, as a conversation starter, um, some of the top items on the work plan would be completing the bylaws. Some uh, community issues would be lack of complaints from historically marginalized communities. What do other folks have or, or think about your thoughts as, in terms of our, our top three for community issues or for our work plan? Milan? I think our three committees are our top three priorities, governance and working on the bylaws and um, legacy with data analysis and getting the right data so that we can actually look at the numbers and the trends and then um, community engagement as well so that we can reach out to those communities historically marginalized and listen to them and understand um, why they do not submit complaints. So I feel like our three committees are really showing our three main priorities. Check. And sometimes with multiple priorities, we split our resources thin. So if you had to pick one, two, and three, what would be number one? That's, that's a, I'm the co-chair of the engagement committee. I feel really strongly about in, engaging with our community. So that's, that's sorry, I'm, I'm very biased on that one, but I also recognize the really fundamental role of data. Um, to me, that is um, key. I don't, I would love to participate in that, but I don't think I have the understanding of how it works. But I, I really think that uh, the results that we are going to get from the analysis of data is um, really, really important. And the bylaws need to happen. So, you know, that is built into the work that we do. Um, so I would say engagement and data and legacy. Thank you. Other people? Chico? I, I, I wouldn't agree, or disagree, or I would agree more with what Milan said. Um, I think the three committees, what we are working on or what we're trying to work on, aligns with uh, uh, what we should present, in my view. So, and in terms of prioritizing, I think the greatest impact would be uh, re-engaging or revitalizing our community engagement approaches. That's the most important thing because everything will flow through that. Thank you, Chico. Jason, I see your hand. Yeah, I, I, I guess I would uh, third that because if the community doesn't believe in what we're doing, we're not going to be able to do anything. So that's where I think we should start. Thank you. And Jason, so that was our community issue. Is there one that you would suggest for like a work plan for what the panel is, or would that be the same thing? The community issue and the work plan for the panel would both be working on community engagement? You know, I, I, I still think that a lot of people don't know that we exist at all. And I think that some people that know that we exist don't trust us. So I think those two things are, are more important than anything else, getting people to know who we are and getting people to trust us. I don't know if we'll ever get them to trust us. I guess what I would say is getting people to be, I don't know, willing to trust us. Thank you, Jason. Lizzie? 
Yeah, thanks. Um, I was just going to reiterate, I, I agree with everything that's been brought up. I'd love to focus on kind of the top priority for each committee, um, but also wondering if we could include something that I think you had in your list, Victor, already, but just to recognize it here, um, just kind of recognizing the core work of the panel as well in reviewing cases and trying to get through some of that kind of backlog we have and really just get like fully back up to speed since the work stoppage. So I think we could, could reflect that in our work plan as well. Um, also, the points about kind of community trust and making sure people are submitting complaints and feeling, you know, comfortable coming forward. I think if we're able to move quickly and get through cases, you know, so people feel like there's, um, they might see, you know, quicker turnaround that could help as well with, with building that trust. Thank you, Lizzie. Uh, Bill? Uh, yeah, I think I would just agree with everybody. The community engagement piece, I think, is really key. But, and to Jason's point, it's not as much as if they'll trust us, but how we can get people to open up and at least start to share their stories in terms of what they're experiencing. And then I think the in terms of a work, the bylaws, getting those cleaned up, I think, is also um, a really important piece. And I wonder... Where does the chief of police search fall into this? Is that a community issue or a work plan issue? I think that's both because it's on our agenda to meet with the chief of police and also okay. it's something that's been brought up by the community as well. Okay, great, thank you. Hi. You ready? I got that for a minutes. Uh, Luna? I'll just echo Bill. Um, I feel like community engagement is really important. And I'm also like, we need to have a foundation of bylaws and like how we do that and how our committees operate. Um, so just by like, logistically, it seems like our bylaws are probably a really high priority. I hear you saying, Luna, it, sometimes it's hard to move forward if you don't have, you know, some things in place. Okay. Other folks, we still have a few minutes on this topic, if you haven't shared. You could also send by email to Soledad, I saw you on mute. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I will agree. I think that Milan was right on. Um, but also, if we have to truly prioritize, I think, community engagement. Uh, with the bylaws, I also agree that would be my number two because we already have bylaws. And I mean, strictly speaking, they're not great. They're not updated, but we have some. So we have something to work from. Um, but I think community engagement is a big piece as, I mean, we have all identified that as one of the most important pieces. So we should we should really focus on that one. And also, sorry, I think that if we are presenting this as our priority, I, I think that more resources should be, should be it should be easier to ask for more, more resources for community out, uh, outreach and engagement if we need them. Thank you, Abigail or Madeline? I was going to say that I think the three committees um, mirror probably where our three responses are. And then Milan took the words right out of my mouth. So I'd like to echo that. I think getting people engaged with the panel is probably the most important thing along with, even though I'm a bylaws girly. Uh, Uh, thank you. Madeline, do you want to add anything right now? I just am wanting to move forward <laughs> as quickly as possible <laughs> with the, um, the governance, with the particularly the bylaws, as well as the 
just just to, to the um, ordinance, just to bring everything up to up to par, up to the current status. And so, yeah. So Abigail and I will jump on that right away. And anybody else that wants to join us, and uh, of course, Midland. Anybody else? Um, yes. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. So we will summarize this and we'll be on the agenda item on our next co-chair meeting, which takes place a week after this meeting. Um, and we'll summarize and get this out and then make sure everyone sees it and approves before we submit it before the 22nd. Does that sound okay? Yes. Sherry? Um. This is not directly related, but I that was just amazing that people were effectively uh, very much in agreement. So that that bodes well. Um, I just wanted to say because you talked about the you mentioned the next co chair meeting. Um, I would just like everyone to know that the you know the when we schedule meetings the you know, it's made up of individuals. So if, especially as some of these committees are, you know, getting new members, you're always able to, you know, discuss amongst yourself like, and figure out a time that, that works for the people who are involved. Um, so we're happy to, you know, change those dates and change the calendars because we want, you know, we want as much attendance as possible. So having these meetings at times that people are able to attend without it being a crunch in their life is uh, is going to help facilitate that. Mm -hmm. So you're saying with some new committee members, we may have some new meeting times as well. Um, so just to be aware of that and to check your emails. On the topic of scheduling and logistics. Our next agenda item is two, three items. Uh, the first one on that is our Q1 chief of police meeting. Um, Selena, I think you have the most up-to-date information from both polls and from um, um, speaking with Bethany. Yeah, um, so, I believe I sent out a poll um, for two dates. I think it was the 18th and then the 20th. So I have um, just a bit of a result here. It seems like we're leaning more towards the 18th. Um, however, um, it seems like one of our co-chairs are going to be um, not be able to attend. And then I know of another panelist as well that won't be able to attend. Um, and then one of the other dates, as I was trying to uh, schedule this with Bethany, it seems like uh, Chief Redfern was going to be out. Um, so opening up the floor to see if maybe we want to just go with the 18th or if we want to reschedule for um, some time in April. Uh, Sherry and I were thinking just so we can keep it close to date <clears throat> was the, uh, um, I'm sorry, <clears throat> uh, the 1st and the 3rd of April. Um, I always can resend out a, a different poll to see if maybe we want to do that. But again, opening up the floor for um to maybe think of a different date. So the eighteenth is next. Oh, go ahead. Um, Selena, was did you say April first and third? Yes, I think Isn't, that's what we. I think the third is that um. City Council yeah. retreat. So. Yeah, Council retreat on the 3rd. So he won't be able to make it on the 3rd. So it looks like maybe the 18th or um, the 1st of April. So apologies, I don't mean to throw you under the bus, Victor. Am I the 18th person? <laughs> I can, okay, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Victor, under the bus. <laughs> and so I know if we were to meet next week, we haven't submitted questions or asked for feedback of, of 
what folks want to ask the chief and maybe if it was moved to April, we would have more time to, you know, gather questions and, and thoughts for that. It's just one idea. I'll, I'll second we move it to the next month. That gives an opportunity for the new panelists to be get on board and to be fully engaged. And will this be a meeting in the evening or during the day? Oh, I'm sorry, Milan, I didn't see your hand up. Does anyone have a time frame for the meeting? Uh, normally, um, it would be from 6 to 8 p.m. Okay. That's on, on yeah. a normal, um, what we've had previously. Yeah. But again, I'm not sure if we're wanting to also change the time um, or considering of moving the time. So the third works for me too. The third is that there's a city council retreat where um, oh. uh, he's going to be attending also. So. Oh, okay. So what are the what's the date we're talking about then? The first. Okay, that works too. Sorry, Milan, I just jumped in front of you. <laughs> No, that was exactly my question. So thank you, Bill. Okay. Yes. Uh, and the so timing the first is works. I'm sorry. Timing is in the evening, right? Six. Six and to six to eight. Sorry. We also discussed, um, you know, the format of this meeting. Do we, you know, have structured times? We have some time for just stuff that's not submitted. We have time for stuff that is submitted. How long is each response going to be? Um, so that's also something that we can discuss prior to that later date, if we go with that date. Can I just add something real quick? Um, is there a preference to maybe having it at the headquarters, the Boulder Police? Um, headquarters, or did we want it at Penfield Tate where the training was? Just because I can figure out the logistics <clears throat> with the chief and his admin. Um, I don't know if we wanted to take that off screen, but I thought maybe I'd throw that in there as well. Um, I don't know if other folks feel differently. I don't have a preference. I think whatever is easier to schedule logistically is fine with me. Milan? I, I personally prefer um, Penfield's um, building. I feel like it's a more neutral environment. Um, Same here. my person. Sorry. I, I agree, Milan. Bill? Um, I don't have a preference. I think if it works for more people on his team to be there, then we could have it in his space. I'm just very supportive of the in-person for this particular meeting versus uh, Zoom. Thank you, Bill and Jason. Uh, to voice for the opposite direction, I'm willing to go into the belly of the beast and see what they got. Um, and uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is, is that if if they think that there is something that we should be scared of there, I want to know about it immediately. I don't think that's the case, um, but I, I certainly don't have a problem with going there. Thank you. And Jason, I also agree with him as well. It would be a positive experience for the new members to walk inside the police station, which maybe they've never done before. Um, and just see what that's like without actually taking the full tour. There are things that we have power and influence there. It's not just them influencing us, but we can also influence them. So not every meeting has to be there, but I think with this new panel members, I would like to meet at the headquarters. Emilana, see your hand. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna still disagree with that, but um, I I just want to make sure that you know going to the police for maybe some members of the panel might be asking um a lot, and I just want to be aware of that. Um, and I also feel that meeting in a more neutral space is always better. Um, I also, you know, I I don't necessarily want to have a lot of people. Uh, from the police department in the room when we're talking to the chief and asking questions. Um, but I'm also very curious to hear about Madeline's opinion. Thank you. Uh, I'm going back to when we started this, uh, when it was a task force, before it became um, the implementation team and then the panel, back to the initial stages, we had some serious issues um, that we had to work through that came up as a result of of um, the uh, police involvement um, and and the imbalance there um, and we worked through that we actually had to bring our our uh, facilitator back in to help us work through some things and so I'm reminded of those things and I don't, would not like for I'd like to prevent that so if we can have neutral territory neutral ground then yeah I would say um, it, it, to go to a neutral place would be uh, preventive so yeah I, I think the Penfield Tate building would be a, a neutral place and perhaps for uh, future meetings, we can consider maybe having the police uh, department go there. But yeah. Thank you, thank you, Madeline. Jason, I see, your, I see your hand. Thank you, Victor. I I, I don't want to say more. And, and Madeline, your words are uh, are I, I'm listening to them deeply right now. Um, what I do want to say is this. I did go on a ride along um, and I encourage everybody to go on a ride along as soon as possible. And if there's anybody out there that thinks that me being with them when they go on a ride along would be safer or better for them, I am happy to do it with you. Okay. Um, I suspect there's other people who would say the same, but the ride along is very important. For uh, and thank you, Madeline, for your point. I didn't know. Uh, Bill and Chico. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to do whatever supports the committee. I'm just going to say that when we talk about a neutral place, typically it's not our house or their house. It's some place that neither one of us really owns, so to speak. And so, so if we're going to find a neutral place, I think it has to be somewhere that's not Penfield Tate or the police department, because that's really what neutral is, is where it's not our place or their place. It's some place that um, isn't connected to either one. And I'll also say there's ways to facilitate a conversation like this so that no matter who's in the room, the needs that we have as a panel and the questions that we wanna bring forward from community can also be answered. And I also appreciate the fact that people have different experiences within the police department. And I want to honor that as well. And so so for me, Victor, I've been in the Boulder Police Department, never as a, um, always as a guest. So, so I'm not afraid to go in there. I've worked with the Denver Police. I've been in their police department. And so it's not about uh, any type of not having that experience. Um, so I just think that, we need to think about more, regardless of where we are, how is the meeting going to be facilitated and, and how are the conversations and questions going to be asked in time frame for answers and, and what is our outcome in this particular meeting? I think those are, the, to me, the structure and the process are what's really important, regardless of where we have it, we need to really think about that. Because to me, that's more important because will it actually lead us to the outcomes that we're looking for? And I was going to say, is this something that Milan, we could talk about in the community engagement piece? 
because this is also um, you know a community engagement process that we're talking about. So those are my initial thoughts here. Thank you. Uh, we we do have case reviews in the monitors report, so we're just going to do two more responses before we move on. Chico, uh, just a quick one. I'll, I'll say we still meet at the. Um... City Council offices, nothing wrong with that. There'll be enough opportunity to to go to the visit with the police, uh, ride alongs, and the use of force training. Those are good opportunities to mingle with them. Thank you, Chico. Soledad? Uh Yeah, so I just want to, for, for the sake of time, I think, uh, one of the reasons that we, we have to choose either or is because we these meetings are are public, so we usually have um, them live streamed. So the Penn um, Tate Building offers that you know facility for us to use, and and it's you know all set up. We just go in there and meet. Um, so that's one one thing to con consider. And I I will say for this time, I would really like us to be. Um, to consider that for 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 those of us who might be easier either or, we should listen to the ones that are saying I don't feel comfortable, and we should support uh, that in in this situation. Um, so I will invite everyone to kind of uh, next meeting with the with the chief police. Let's have it in the same place. We can keep talking. Uh, if that changes, we can we can make a different decision next time. We meet every three months. So there's there's more opportunities for that, I think. So I, I, I would like to propose that we land on meeting in the city building for, for the next time. It's three weeks away. Uh, and then we can figure it out. Thank you, Soledad. Uh, the next scheduling thing is April BT, April BPD training which is uh, use of force, de-escalation, defensive task, tactics, and crisis intervention. Yeah, the so that training is um, mandatory for the new panelists, um, really encouraged for um, other panelists to attend also. Um, so the dates that were offered for that were uh, by the PD were April, um, 20th and 27th. Which mm. is a Saturday. It um and they estimated that it would be approximately um three hours long. Uh Jason. Thank you, Victor. Um I, I really want to go to this, uh, but I cannot be there on the 27th. I can be there on the 20th. Abigail? I also cannot be there on the 27th, but I am free the 20th. Okay. Bill? I'm out of town that whole weekend of the 20th, but I can be there on the 27th. And Luna? I also cannot be there on the 20th. I can be there on the 27th. Okay. You split. <laughs> Just okay. like you may have some behind the scenes coordination to do or. Yeah. Um... Is there any way we could do it both weekends? Um, I can ask. Um, yeah, I'll, I will definitely um, check in with uh, BPD tomorrow about that. Um, and let me just, I, sorry. I, what about, I don't know. I don't even know if it's on the table or not to have a Sunday training um but the well you know what those were the two days that they gave me so i will i will come back to them and see if they possibly could do both um and if not to give me some extra dates okay just being aware of the time i saw that the next one is the retreat. I know the retreat was postponed. Are there any updates on that or is it still going to be decided behind the scenes? 
I think we're going to have, uh, Selena is going to send a poll to decide on the date for that um, to everyone. So as soon as you can answer it, that would be very helpful. And then um, Selena and the committee will probably work on a venue for all of us and we'll figure out a program that we'll propose to you. Um, I believe that's what um, it's how it's going to work for unless you have any other idea of how it should be, but we we welcome, we do welcome um, any ideas on what activities you would wanna see. We have a three hour um, um, slot. And so if there's anything that you would like to discuss, practice um, that's not panel business, um, but to uh, please let us know. Um, you can send me a, a, um, a, an email. I'll bring it to the next meeting. You can come to the next meeting for that. But yes, please um, let us know. We This is my first time organizing this retreat, so um, need your help. Um, if you have any ideas on um, what to do and what kind of activities you'd like to see. Thank you. Um, so that you. you have anything else to add to that? Uh, no. The next item is the independent monitors report. Okay, I'm going to be presenting the um, March 2024 Boulder Police Oversight Panel Meetings Independent Police Monitors Report, and we. The, the full case files that were reviewed or completed in uh, February 2024 um, was zero. Um, we have one case um, file pending the Boulder Police Department disposition, and that's MI2023-011. There currently are six cases awaiting panel review, um, and those are MI20. 23-034, MI2023-035, um, SM2024-001, and then MI2024-001, 2, and 3. There was a single case completed um, in February of 2024 by BPD. And the allegation uh, for Officer 1 was a Rule 1 violation, compliance with values, rules, and general orders, General Order 203, investigative responsibility and case assignment, did not conduct an adequate investigation. I recommended a um, sustained finding with a one-year letter of reprimand. The department um, agreed and they sustained the allegation with a one-year letter of reprimand. I would also just like to note that this was an instance where the um, police department actually uh, took the independent police monitor's recommendation um, for a higher penalty than what had been recommended by members of the chain of command. Um, for officer two, it was rule one, um, compliance with values, rules, and general orders, customer service value, did not respond to an email sent by a complainant. Um, I recommended that Officer 2, this allegation is sustained with verbal counseling, and the department also determined it was a sustained allegation with verbal counseling. Um, Officer 3 had two allegations. First was Rule 1, compliance with values, rules, and general orders, customer service value, told the complainant that he could not take any action. I recommended this allegation be not sustained, and the department also determined that to not sustain the allegation. And the second was uh, rule one, compliance with values, rules, and general orders, GO 240-2B, in-car cameras, body-worn cameras, and personal recording devices, did not activate his body-worn camera during the phone call with the complainant. And I recommended a sustained verbal counseling and the department also determined that it was a sustained allegation with verbal counseling. 
Regarding uh, the February 2024 monthly case statistics, um, I classified 10 complaints, seven were um, misconduct complaints, zero for serious misconduct, two community inquiries, and one case was referred to con the conflict facilitation process. I observed two interviews. I did not respond to any critical incident scene. I deemed one investigation thorough and complete, and uh, BPD closed one case. The open docket, the open docket as of um, March 11th today, is uh, 20 cases. 17 of those cases are um, classified, and there are three that are pending my classification. Based on a request uh, last month, I identified more specifics regarding the uh, open cases from 2023. There are six of those cases. Um, the oldest of the case, which was registered um, in March of um, 2023, it is pending the, the chief's final determination. And I was told to expect that case very soon. Um, MI 2023-018, I deemed it thorough and complete in this month. So it is also pending the chief's determination. Um, MI 2023-028, the interviews on that case are complete. Um, I am waiting to receive the case so that I can uh, review it for a thorough and completeness. MI 2023033, um, that officer was on extended leave and he, uh, he's expected to return this month. Um, and when, once he returns, we can proceed with an interview. Um, MI 2023-034, we completed the interviews that are expected to occur in that case. Um, I still need to receive it from BPD to review for thorough and completeness. Um, and MI 2023-035, I reviewed that case and I have requested that the police department conduct additional investigative steps. I also wanted to make sure that the panel was aware of the uh, the status of the um, fatal officer involved shooting from December of last year. So late last week, the district attorney determined that there were no charges appropriate for the fatal involved shooting. And I wanted to make sure that people were aware that uh, the district attorney is going to be um, conducting a virtual ha um, town hall later this week which um, will include video clips from the from the shooting. Um, and that can be your first opportunity to um, learn more information about that. Uh, the Boulder Police Department, uh, actually this is, I have updated information. Um, they did receive the, the digital file from uh, the Boulder County investigative team and they are working currently to upload all of those voluminous files to evidence.com. And as I learn more about uh, developments and timelines for the panel's review, I will definitely share that with you. And regarding some of the uh, community engagement that I have been working on, I have uh, in the month of February attended uh, multiple events hosted by the University of Colorado Center for African American Studies and the law school. And I met with a representative for the Center for People with Disabilities on a project that we're working on. And I also met with Boulder County Sheriff uh, to speak with him and then had an opportunity to tour the Boulder County Jail. And that is my report. Am I still sharing my screen? No. Okay, good. Thank you. And our next item is the case review votes. Um, Victor. 
since this is the first time with the new panelists, can um, I know that this is in the bylaw, so can I move to have a um, executive session so we can talk a little bit more about the cases and then we can come back to the public meeting? Second. I don't know if the breakout room function is enabled in the webinar. So you may not be able to do that. Is that correct, yeah. Shana? Yeah, so I'm in the works right now of um, upgrading the Zoom license that I have right now um, to be able to do webinar breakout rooms. So should be coming hopefully next panel meeting, um, but I am working on that and it's taking quite some time. So I apologize. Okay. Um, I need I need to ask for one second, please. Um, so I'm gonna turn off my camera and my mic. And Sherry, can I give you a quick call? It's kind of important. Um, sure. I guess I'll be turning yeah. off my camera and mic. Yeah, please. Just um, one, one second, and it's re regarding one of the cases, so that's why. While we're waiting for that, what was the outcome for the no, meeting? Are we going to be at Penfield Tate or, or, or Police Department? Madeline, I think we said Penfield Tate. Okay, I, I stepped away for a minute. So, thanks. <laughs> Sorry, we're back. Big typo on one of the pages. <laughs> uh, this is normally led by the co-chairs. So the first case is M12024-004. Mm -hmm. With officer one, the allegation is rule four, respect for others. And uh, who wishes to vote to review? MI2024-004, all four. So we're asking to vote to accept the case, correct? Yes. I, I was just wanting to make sure that new panelists understand the process. Um, since we haven't seen that, they haven't seen that before. Uh, Luna, your question? Yeah, I have some clarifying questions, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. So we vote if we're going to accept the case, and then do people volunteer to take the case? Or... Yes. Okay. Oh, and I remember reading that if it doesn't happen, then... Uh, members are assigned. That is correct. Thank you. So 
So just to clarify, now we vote. If the majority said yes, we review the case, then we assign, assign people. Not everyone, not all the cases you vote yes for, you have to take on yourself. Okay. And I would also just like to say that um, um, right now we're in sort of the the a lull of case reviews um, because the the panel had been on a moratorium for several months and just the natural progression of cases has put us in a situation where I don't anticipate the panel actually conducting a case review for probably another two or three months. So votes for yes on M1 2024-004 by showing your hands. And that was four votes for no. Are you asking a question, Lizzie, or just raising your hand? Just raising my hand. Sorry, guys. I'll be back on camera momentarily. Okay. And that's four votes for no. So that means not everyone voted. There's only eight votes. That was five, Victor. That was five? Yeah, Lizzie had her hand up. Okay. You, me, Jason, and Chico. Did Madam vote? No, I did not. I'm trying to get my camera back on, but uh, yes, no, or abstain. I will vote <laughs> abstain. <laughs> Thank you. The next case is MI2024-005. Uh, the complaints are a Rule 4 violation, respect for others, a Rule 6 violation, use of force, and another Rule 6 violation, use of force. Votes for yes to review this case. Yes. Six saying yes. And votes for no. Two votes for no. The next case is MI two zero two four dash zero zero six. There is a rule four violation, respect for others, and a rule four violation, respect for others. Votes to review this case. I see two hands. Votes to not review this case. Seven. Vote no. The next case is MI2024-007. There is one rule four violation respect for others. Votes to review this case. Mm -hmm. Votes, is that a yes, Madeline? Yes. Votes not to review this case? Vilan, did you vote or abstain? Abstain. Okay. The next case is MI2024-008. There is a rule one violation, compliance with values, rules, and general orders. 
and a rule four violation, respect for others. Against officer two, there is a rule one violation, compliance with rules, values, and general orders, and a rule four violation, respect for others. Uh, votes to review this case. Looks like that's nine. Votes to not review this case. The next case is MI 2024-009. There's a rule one violation, compliance with rules, values, and general orders. Rule one, an additional rule one violation, a rule four violation, respect for others, and a rule four violation, respect for others. Also, a rule one violation as well. Votes to review this case. That's four. And votes not to review this case. And that is four. Who did not vote for that one? I was hoping to abstain. Okay. So, Cher, we have four yes, four no, and one abstain. For... Can we talk about it in the executive session after this meeting? We can't do that in Zoom based on the webinar model. We'd have to set up a whole new meeting to do that. So, and I have to be done at 8 30. So, yeah, and we are already over time. Yep. I'm having an issue with this then. Um, okay, Sherry, we have four votes yes, four votes no, and one abstain. So, where does that leave you? Um, Looking at the by bylaws. Okay, Victor, would you repeat the um the, the details of the case? It's MI 2024-009, and there are five complaints. Three of those are compliance with rules, values, and general orders, and the other two are respect for others. Mm, okay. There's actually another rule one violation. So there's six violations in total. The language in the bylaws is an affirmative vote of the majority of the panelists present at the meeting will result in a complaint being assigned for review by at least three panelists. So if, my take on that is if it is for yes, for no, that that is not a case that the panel is choosing to uh, select for review. Okay. And I, I'd like to object to that, but um, I guess if that's the rule, that's the rule, but I just want to express that I disagree with it. Could we, if, if folks are wanting an executive session, can we end the meeting, end the recording, and then just enter an executive session? We don't need the breakout function if we're not coming back to the meeting. Yeah, we're already over time, though, and that would be an additional unknown amount of time as well. We're talking about case reviews, though. This is the main reason why we're here. Right. I would propose then that we can we decide that Ty goes for this that Ty goes to the review I would like to honor the folks who would like to review considering that we have a good number of folks who do Jason I see your hand huh? um, I propose that we re-review this case next time um, when we might be able to have the time to discuss it if we can't discuss it now. Yeah, the bylaws say we need a majority, which we don't have. So could we table this case until the next meeting, Sherry? Um, 
I mean, I'm not an expert on parliamentary procedure and things like that, but I, I mean, I might suggest taking the vote again and seeing if anyone has changed their vote or has That's fine. Uh, yeah. decided not to, that they are not abstaining anymore. Okay, so one one last vote for MI two zero two four dash zero one zero, which includes six violations. Three of those are respect for others, and three of those are compliance with the rules, values, and general orders. Those who vote to review this, raise. Sorry, Victor, you said a different number. Which one are we talking about? Oh. Are we at oh oh nine or. I'm sorry. Um, MI two zero two four dash zero zero nine. Okay. Okay, and there's six violations. Uh, Sterling, I see your hand. Did you say there was six violations, Victor? Yes. Obviously, I don't really have a, a vote here. I just want to say that I think with um, a vote already being um, had, there could be a, a cause for, depending on how um, the panel um, sees this case, if it does get seen, if a um, cause for somebody to, you know, complain about it based on the bylaws, you know, if, uh, if you guys were to say that the officers um, did something wrong, and I just don't want that to come back to the um, negatively on the panel, just a thought. Thank you, Sterling. Jason? I abstained on this one, and I'm willing to go with the four and change my vote since I had an abstention. So votes to review MI2024-009. Votes for yes. And votes for no. All right, the next case is MI2024-010. There is a three rule four, three rule four violations for officer run, respect for others, and two rule one violations, compliance with rules, value, and general orders. And for officer two, there are also five violations. Three of those are respect for others, and two of those are compliance with values, rules, and general orders. Votes to review MI2024-010. One, two, three, four. Go start it, man. And votes to not review it. And how many was someone counting the votes not to review? That was I counted five, but you want to recount? Hmm. Do we need a recount or did you catch that, Sherry? I, I had counted five, but okay. if someone objects to that, then human. All right, the next item on our agenda, um, we're just going to skip to the public comment. Do we have one member of the public present who would like to comment? Yep, so Lynn, we will give you two minutes. And if anyone from the panel wishes to respond, there's time for that. Yeah, I didn't have the unmute sign up yet. Um, yeah, um, 
a, a lot of this, I really don't, just if you could be empathetic to a member of the public, um, all of these police meetings that I'm going to, I feel like, and I cover like five or six city boards, some conflict with each other. I'm missing the transportation advisory board right now. But I feel like with this police oversight situation, all I'm hearing every meeting that I go to, and I don't go to all of them, is logistics and bylaws and engagement. And I don't feel engaged at all. And especially with two minutes, I mean, city councils, other than Boulder, get three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. And all the boards I go to get three minutes and you've got two minutes and you have one person speaking. It just seems so uncaring about really having the public input when I have two minutes to speak. And I I have my own situation that happened. I was concerned about Zaid Atkinson, Sammy Lawrence. You know, I want to hear the dimensions of these issues. I don't want to hear that some woman's been shot. I want to hear why. Um, and I want to resolve these things and I want restorative justice and I don't see it happening. Now, if I'm missing something or I'm just too stupid and I don't know, I'm not watching closely enough. I don't know what these numbers mean. I don't know what these cases are behind. I, I just hear that there are police that aren't respecting. And in my situation, like Hamilton, I was riding my bike home after waiting three hours for the police to come when my gear was taken from the municipal building. And he yelled at me to get off my bike when I'm trying to get home to plug in my phone because I don't want to wait another three hours. If that's not respect, I don't know what not respect is. And so maybe you can see why I don't have much faith in the police department. And I want to. But I'm not getting it from these police meetings. But maybe, and if you tell me, just skip going to them. I'll, I'll, I'll not, I'll not come, because I don't think it's doing anything for me. I don't ever feel like anyone responds back. I'm, I feel like I'm talking into an echo chamber. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Lynn. Does yeah. anyone on the panel like to respond? I'll just say I hear you, Lynn. Um, we're trying to get better. That's what we're doing. And logistics is part of our work. Unfortunately, believe me, I would rather not do that. But um, um, hopefully in the near future you will feel like we are engaging more with the community um thank you for being here consistently we appreciate that yeah i wanted to mention lynn as well we've heard you about the the time period for public comment we definitely um appreciate that feedback and that is something that's in our bylaws and we are slated as you've heard to to re-examine those and possibly make some changes so um we'll definitely consider your feedback about the public comment period when we do that work thanks well thank you everyone for attending this meeting um as always appreciate your time um and just have a good rest of your evening thank you Thank you. Good night. Thanks.